Celebration may not seem like a spiritual discipline, but I promise you, it is. What is celebration? Well, to celebrate is essentially to worship God with the full knowledge of who he is, with a heart that knows exactly what he's created you for, to worship him knowing that you're going to be worshipping him for all eternity. The joy that brings, the freedom that brings, the immensity of that vision, that is celebration. And in today's video, Stephen, Ollie and Joe are going to talk about that. So today we're talking about celebration and I know Ollie you've got a story about your your granny who was really good at celebrating her faith. Uh yeah, she was. Um and uh well yeah, this story is is I guess it's quite a sad story. It was when my uh, granny found out that she uh has got cancer, but the doctor said that she's riddled with cancer. So she's in her 80s, so um you know, it's not it was yeah it is sad finding out when it, when it, when anyone ever gets cancer but she you know she lived a, a good life and a long life um and um one of her church friends an older guy as well um came storming into the room and said margarita you're dying that's wonderful news uh you get to be with jesus and um i like uh, i remember hearing that story and just been like how dare you my granny dying is not happy there is no joy in this i am going to miss her so much she means so much to me how dare you mm. um but um the more you like think about it actually there's truth in it there is mm. celebration in it there is joy in it because my grandma who has been faithful to her faith faithful to jesus um is going to be with her maker going to be with jesus and there is celebration in that and there is joy in that even though it's painful and it was painful for my family and it was painful for mm. me because um she meant so much and she was just a wonderful human being and a wonderful person and saying mm. goodbye is always hard um but i knew that the goodbye wouldn't be forever because i knew that we'd be reunited in eternal yeah. in the eternal life and i knew that she was and i guess that's what my faith does it, it and her faith is that there's belief in afterlife and there's joy in that uh, so ollie you you've got a bible verse that really sums up what what celebration is haven't you yeah it's just a very short uh, uh bible verse it's uh, in revelation uh chapter 21 verse 4 and it says he will wipe away every tear from their eyes there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the older order of things has passed away mm. and actually that that really it goes to sum up some words of jesus in john 10 verse 10 where he says uh, he says i have come that they may have life and have it to the full and when jesus says that it really is like a it's a shortening down of, of that really you know when when we when we have life there's no more sickness no more pain no more death and this isn't just some airy fairy pie in the sky uh you know god is a spaghetti monster kind of thing this is really going to happen we are really going to live forever eternal life is a real thing we genuinely believe this and that is why we're so full of joy and we make the most of our lives on earth because we know that we're going to be with God in, in, in his kingdom, whatever that looks like, forever, for all eternity. But we only have this time on earth to impact uh, more and more souls for Christ. Um, there's a wonderful analogy by a, a preacher in America called Francis Chan, where he takes the very end of a piece of string and he colours it in black. Um, and then he, he throws the piece of string and it unravels it unravels a whole whole spool of string and he says imagine that this this little black dot on the end represents your life on earth and then imagine that the rest of this spool of string represents the whole of eternity now when you see this little black dot on the end you wonder why you're focusing on your entire life rather than your entire eternity celebration is about taking our lives 
and seeing it from a different perspective. It's seeing it from the perspective of eternity. And Joe, I think you, you've got a couple of ways that we can really practically do that. Some practical ways that you can uh, demonstrate the discipline of celebration is I guess that you're like full of joy when you come to God and you're praising him and you're like in worship or in prayer or in your Bible reading, you're just saying thank you to God and focusing on the fact that you are saved, that you have been gifted this gift that was unattainable and that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you to give mm. you that speck of eternal life rather than just mm. the speck that you're mm. spending on life mm. here on earth. And mm. another thing I want to say is that in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 4, it says that there is a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. And it's okay if you're in the time to dance and laugh and celebrate mm. um, while others are weeping and mourning. It's, mm. it's okay that you're celebrating when others are crying. Like you, you celebrate the fact that Jesus has saved you. And then mm. when it's your time to mourn, you'll mourn. And when it's your time to weep, you'll weep but just be in that moment of joy when it overcomes you and overwhelms you. Mm, mm. That's so good. It's so true. I think we really need to focus on the cross because actually at the cross, Jesus did so much more than just give us eternal life. He also helped us enter into relationship with God. But that's what the cross did, it did two things. Uh, G, you know, we, we were covered in the blood of, the, the, the blood of Jesus and we were restored to relationship with God um, because previously God had, we, we were enemies of God. And so the blood of Jesus took the wrath of God away from us and we have relationship with him, but we have that relationship for all eternity. So we can celebrate that. Um, yeah, I think for, for me, I, I can't, I can't separate celebration from the cross and I can't separate the cross from celebration which seems really funny doesn't it because actually there's nothing to celebrate about a man you know spread eagled on a cross you know hammered nails through his hands and tortured there's nothing to celebrate about that but actually in Christ we know that that cross is the most beautiful perfect thing on this planet that he he was on that cross for us because he he wanted us to be wrath free not not living under the wrath of god but under the the love and the the relationship with god um so i think yeah we, we need to we need to view life with the eternity of relationship with god because he longs for that relationship so much that he he sent jesus to do that So that is celebration. How on earth can you begin to practice celebration this week as a spiritual discipline? Why not put it down below in the comments?